Alright, so I warn you, this video will have something for sale at the end of the video. And it has to do with conductive paint. So if you have ever electroformed anything with any kind of detail as far as an organic is concerned, you'll find out that the conductive paint, when painted onto an organic, fails quite miserably. Um, you have to either dry it out or you have to seal it three ways from Sunday. But I have con like found a formula that works with organics, seals in all the moisture, it works with insects, it works with feathers, it works with everything that you could possibly imagine. Um, you do not have to dry anything out anymore. It's very conductive, easy to make, and yeah. But I, I just got a couple examples here before I get into the sales pitch. So this, I don't know if I can show you that much detail, but I'll try. So this is a really tiny flower thing. And if you tried to paint these little things, you would find that it's, it's hard to get that much detail because the paint would glob up on it. So this was not painted, it was dipped. Okay. Uh, here's a clematis vine seed. Uh, to get the brush down into something like this would be nearly impossible. Not to mention, as soon as you touch this stuff with a brush, uh, these would wilt. Not wilt, but get too heavy and they fall in. So you wouldn't get this type of dynamic like this. And those are two, this is like worst case scenario really to be honest with you. And this is pretty bad too because it's so detailed and so small. But um, I'm sure you'll come up with all kinds of other crazy if you're interested in this. It is very low price, uh, well, worth, well worth it. And I'll let you watch the rest of the video where I show you a little bit about like conductivity and bonding agents and then afterwards I'll show you some examples of dipping and all that good stuff. This paint also works with painting circuitry so if you're into stuff like painting circuitry, um, putting an LED on glass, putting an LED on fabric, lighting that up with batteries, yep, does that too. So it does a lot of stuff other than electroforming and electroplating. So, without further ado, I introduce you to the video. Alright, so before I introduce you to this conductive paint that I've created, uh, I want to quickly kind of go through something. Um, this is a multimeter, and this is the resistance on things. So I'm going to show you something. Uh, here's plain copper, okay, and if I was to touch these leads across plain copper, you'd almost get down to, you know, a half a ohm of resistance. So, obviously, copper conducts electricity rather well. Here's a piece of aluminum. And you can see that it's about average about 8 ohms for resistance when it's fluctuating, somewhere around that. So obviously the most conductive surfaces end up in this range and as it goes higher it would be less conductive. Okay, That's how I'm measuring conductivity. So, what I've done is uh, kind of explain how the multimeter works and, you know, like what we're looking at. And now we're going to look at uh, this conductive paint through testing and just kind of give you a brief overview of how it works. Alright, let's look at drying times because when a conductive paint is wet, it's less conductive. 
So what I've done is I've hooked this, these two leads up to my multimeter in the ohm ratio here. And let's paint a small strip between those two leads. And right now, it's not reading anything, so I'm going to go to 2K, 20K, 200K, and you can see it counting down. And as it counts down to zero within the 200K, It'll go back to 1, and then I'd have to go to 20K. So you would have to have a larger source of power in order to carry current across that. Now I have a different ratio of paint. So I'm just going to set this to the side. I'm going to move these over a little bit. Just stirring that. This one comes in a tub. I'll zoom out just a little bit. And I'm just simply dipping a brush in there and just running a bead across. This brush is toast, so. And here's my multimeter. And you can see that the, it, it just now clicked on. And it's dropping rather quickly. So this formula right here that I have, that I just spread out, has a higher conductive ratio. So it's like got more conductive material in the solution. Now for certain things, you don't need that much conductivity. Like let's say you were electroplating, for example. Uh, you don't need all that much of conductivity in order to electroplate something. I have over here a couple strips of different commercial, this one's Mod Podge and uh, Graphite. That's a 50-50 formula. And then I have a commercial brand over here along with that. So we're going to kind of look at those two and see what happens. These are these are very well known to work with electroforming, electroplating. So actually, but the drying times on them are ridiculous. Eh, not really. But in the heat of battle, yeah. So right now, this is this is dry. This is Mod Podge in graphite paint. And you can see that it's pretty high. It's like maybe 40 at best. Here's a commercial brand. And I won't use names because this isn't about that. So here's a commercial brand. And it's pretty low. 
like 0.6. Nice. So the drying times on these are roughly about 30 minutes. So when you go to dip something or paint something, obviously there would be time on the organic, for example, that the organic would need to dry and wilt and all kinds of crazy stuff. So this stuff dries within seconds, where this stuff dries within like 10 minutes, maybe, maybe 30 minutes on really, in really, really, really good conditions. So the goal is to have something that dries very quickly and is conductive if we want to preserve organics and also seal in moisture that's a very important thing so i want to go straight from picking something out of the garden dipping it in conductive fluid and then it's conductive all right so i have that and i'm going to show you a couple examples of it here in the next couple clips all right, so one of the other things I want to show you before I show you the organics is toughness, okay? So this is a ratio where I add more um, sort of a adhesion to it, okay? So the formula allows you to play with adhesion too. For example, this has a little less adhesion in it. So I can scrape it off of my fingernail, okay? Where this one over here has a higher ratio and I can't scrape that off. Now, why would you care about that? Because of detail, okay? So for leaves, bugs, insects, stuff like that, you don't need a whole lot of adhesion or toughness because you're you're going to have a conductive surface on it growing so this would allow lots of detail to show up where this one wouldn't allow a whole lot of detail to show up okay so that's why there's different ratios within this formula so one is conductivity higher or lower based upon how much conductive material that we put in a paint, and then the binding agent. In this case, less binding agent, more binding agent. Here's an example of less binding agent. Notice the detail of the fern. I think they're called prawns, yeah. So you can see the little spine, you can see all the detail. The back side. See all the detail. And if you notice it's very stiff, that means it can be lowered into electroforming solution or electroplating solution. Very easy. So not a whole lot of binding agent went into this one so the detail is preserved okay so here's an example of higher bonding agent and you can see the detail but some of the very very fine gaps are filled in but still pretty good for the amount of detail as you add bonding agent You can kind of yeah see the bubbles and stuff like that. So that was dirt <laughs> that I didn't rinse off. Um, so the advantage here is, you notice how firm this is. It's very sturdy. So this is a very sturdy piece, but the detail a little bit less. So that's the advantage of adding or disadvantage like bonding agent. How it works: lower the bonding agent, more detail. Higher the bonding agent less detail. Cool. Now that you kind of understand the bonding agent and the conductivity, I'll show you a few examples. Very detailed. That's a 
a small wire around it. All right, into the pot. is now coated with a conductive surface. You can give it a couple coats even because what happens is, is it's a very thin liquid and it dries within seconds, cures within 10 minutes. So this won't be a, able to electroplate for about 10 minutes. I have this succulent, and you know succulent plants, they're known to have a lot of moisture in them. So normally you would have to dry these out, do all kinds of crazy things, into the pot. The succulent, I might want to give it two coats. So just let that dry. And we'll come back to that one. So this one's not done growing yet. I just wanted to show you the contrast in the detail. So uh, here is an electroplating succulent. And you can see the crazy amount of detail as it grows. Um, in fact, it's so shiny that you can't, it looks almost black on the ends, but it stops right there as, as uh, super reflective and then goes, this is the unfinished version of it. But look at that. That was not dried out. It just got done raining almost outside. It is that wet. So, pretty impressive. A very small flower. Trying to. But well, the shiny stuff is really hard to get the deep. I mean, like, to get the camera to go onto it. Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, it's small, it's got these little leaves, I'm trying. I like that leaf right there, just captured it on the way out. So yeah. Here's an example of a really small, delicate flower. I don't know what kind of flower this is. My wife would know, but you can see all the crazy detail just below the flower. Um, I picked this flower because it was probably the most fragile in the garden. It was purple with a, like a yellow center. And yeah, got all the detail. I'm gonna try to zoom in and then hold this back maybe the shiny stuff does not like to be f videoed nice so here's the more detailed 
fern prawn. Sell this to C3PO. It's a Star Wars joke, but yeah, pretty shiny. All right, so by now you're probably asking yourself, where is the formula? And the formula is in the link below. But it is actually at a small dollar amount. So you're gonna be purchasing a PDF, and in the PDF contains the formula, three variations of it, so you can know what they do, uh, the ingredients, where to buy the ingredients, mixing instructions, and everything else. And even uh, my email address if you have any questions. Other than that, uh, again, any money from that is probably going to go back into research for other things too. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you as a customer. I appreciate you as a viewer of this video. And uh, thank you. And if you have any questions, again, you know, just put them in the link below. Um, if not, you have a good one.